How you doing? Good, good. Just getting ready to shoot the show. I'm glad I caught you. Good luck with it. Oh, thanks, thanks. You know, I'm really anxious to find out if a guy with your taste in clothes can make it in prime time. Oh, uh, thanks, I guess. Yeah. You're on, Mr. Leno. Oh, great. Oh, I got to run. Thank you, sir. You got one, you got one sure. second? Uh, is, is that your motorcycle outside? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's in my parking spot, and the oil is leaking all over. Could you move it? Oh, uh, but th th that's where I always park when, when, I, when, I, when I fill in. No, no, no. On Mondays, Jay. Only on Mondays. Oh, do uh, you need to move right now? Would you? Uh, It'll be Tuesdays, then Wednesdays you'll want, Thursdays, weekends. I'll yeah, okay. Um. Jay Leno's Family Comedy Hour with Jay's guests from the Golden Girls, B. Arthur, from L.A. Law, Corbin Bernson, from Leave it to Beaver, Barbara Billingsley, from Family Ties, Ryan Bonzel, from Falcon Crest, Shao Li Chi. From Hazel, Don DeFore. From L.A. Law, Richard Dysart. From Houston Knights, John Hancock. From the Brady Bunch, Florence Henderson. From L.A. Law, Susan Rattan. From Al, Ann Shadeen. From Eight is Enough, Dick Van Patten. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jay Leno. come here to have fun. No, actually, we didn't. We didn't come here to have fun. The name of the show is The Family Comedy Hour, and in keeping with that theme, they booked a set that looks kind of like a house. Can we, can we move this wall so they can see what the set looks like? There you go, and uh, just to give you an idea, you can see it's, it's about as well constructed as your average American home nowadays. <laughs> <sighs> Spoke to my family. My mom and dad are doing pretty good. You know, this past year, I made a big, big mistake. Last Christmas, I got my mom and dad a video tape recorder for Christmas. You know, I figured this would be a great gift. Uh, they can watch TV whenever they want. They can rent movies. They can tape their favorite shows. You ever try to explain to your parents how to use that automatic timer? <laughs> you know, my mom doesn't even want to learn. You bring out anything electronic, right away those eyes just glaze over. <laughs> you know, my dad can't get it to work. He's out there with the pliers. Let me open the back. Take a look in there. <laughs> In the back, Dad. Maybe there's a screw loose. There's no screws in it, Dad. I says, look, Ma, the timer is real easy. First, press the day you want to watch TV. I want to watch it today. Doesn't say today on the machine, Ma. You have to press Wednesday. How does it know it's Wednesday? It's got a brain, Mom. It knows it's Wednesday. <laughs> you know, when I told my mother you could tape one show while watching another show, you would have thought I said, men from Mars have landed, Ma. <laughs> the end of the world, man's technology can go no further. My phone bill is hundreds and hundreds of dollars every month from calling back east to try to explain to my parents how to use this stupid videotape machine. Yeah. Now, Mom, now listen. Now, just listen. Tell Daddy to put the tape in and press play. <laughs> you have to press play. Your father says it'll cause a fire. It's not gonna cause a fire. <laughs> Press play! He's afraid to touch it! He was in World War II! How can he be afraid to touch it? You know what I do now? I go home at Christmas, I turn the machine on, I come back at Easter, I turn the machine off, okay? <laughs> the thing hums for five or six months at a time. You know what my mother did all winter to save electricity? And you know the kind of bills you're running with a VCR. What are we talking, nine, ten cents a year to run with? <laughs> my mother would unplug the machine every night, and then plug it in again every morning, and she can't understand why the clock keeps going 12, 12, 12, 12. <laughs> this whole thing started because I told a lie. You know, it's true, you tell a lie, it comes back to haunt you the rest of your life. See, my folks are a little old-fashioned. When I told my mom and dad I was getting them this video tape recorder, you know, right away my, my, my mother starts in. You know, oh, those things cost hundreds of dollars. Your father and I don't want you spending all your money on a big gift. You know, like I've been in show business 15 years, I've now accumulated 179.95. I said, Ma, it's no big deal. It's too much money. We'll send it right back. We'll send it right back. It'll go right back to the store. We're not accepting it. So I told a lie. All right. I said, look, Ma, a friend of mine runs a video shop here in town. He gets some wholesale only 
you know, sell my mom. Oh, 25 Well, 25 dollars is a nice. All right, you can spend 25 dollars. That's a good amount to spend. Uh, two weeks later, I get a check from my mom for $100. She wants four more machines for the neighborhood. <laughs> the best deal in town. <laughs> See, I come from the East Coast. I come from New England, actually. In New England, we have the, the old round kind of parents. You know, little Pepperidge Farm moms that you see, you know? You know, little four-by-four four moms. <laughs> See, here in California, it's different. The moms drive Corvettes, and they wear halter tops, and, you know... We got grandmothers out here with names like Bambi and Muffin, you know. I got one of those moms that iron socks. You know what I'm talking about? You know, they iron the toe of the socks so in case your shoe falls off someplace important, people know you come from a good home. My dad's a fun guy. My dad is retired now. I don't know if we had a, have any uh, retired gentlemen here, but... See, you know, I see other guys' dads. They retire. They hunt. They fish. They have a hobby. You know, my dad just drives my mom nuts. He keeps adding rooms onto the house, you know? <laughs> you know, my mother tries to explain, no one lives here anymore. We don't need a second rumpus room. I don't need a billiard room. I don't play billiards. But this is what he does. When he's not adding rooms, he's writing angry letters to major corporations. That's what my dad does. <laughs> so my dad gets mad. He just, he just writes an angry letter. Like, I was home at Easter, you know, went home for the Easter week. And my dad had gone to the store, and he bought that huge box of Kellogg's Sugar Frosted Flakes. You know, the big, giant one. And it said right on the side, Free M&M's inside. My dad didn't get his free M&M's. Uh, that's all anybody heard all through Easter. I don't know who the heck they think they are. These companies, they don't know who the heck they're dealing with. So why don't you write them a letter, Dad? I'll write them a letter. I'll write them a letter first thing tomorrow morning. My father writes this four-page letter to Kellogg's. Shows me a letter. I said, Dad, I think disembowel is a little harsh, isn't it? <laughs> can't you come to an agreement with these people? See, my mom is the exact opposite. My mom came to this country as an immigrant, you know, so she's, she's so afraid she's going to break the law. You know, she, uh, once or twice a month, she checks those mattress tags, makes sure they're on there good and tight. You know, oh, God forbid the police should come and there's a problem with anything. Like, I was home about, uh, about a month ago, and my mom and I were sitting up late talking. You know, my dad had gone to bed, and my mother and I were having one of our, our usual political discussions. I think we were discussing uh, Nicaragua, you know. And my mother and I discuss Nicaragua the same way we discuss Vietnam. My mother always has the same answer to any uh, problem around the world. If they took the guns away from both sides, then no one could fight, could they? <laughs> I said, you know, you're right, Ma. I'm going to tell the president about this first time I see him. Anyway, we're talking. Now, you see, I thought it was kind of odd, because my mom never asked for anything. And she says to me, uh, she says, geez, you know, your father and I were at the mall, and I saw this blouse, and it was $90, and... Gee, your father thought it was too much money. So I said, well, you want the blouse? Look, here's $100. Go buy the blouse. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Ooh, I can't take money from you. Oh, my God, your father hit the roof. We think I took, took $100 from you. I thought, well, just take the money, buy the blouse, don't tell Daddy. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, I can't do that. Look, he'll never know. Oh, he'll find out. He's not going to. Oh, he'll find out somehow. I said, he's not going to know. Just take the money, buy the blouse, don't tell Daddy. Have fun. And I come down to breakfast the next day. My father's sitting there. He says, uh... The heck's the matter with your mother? She's up all night. She's pacing up and down. She didn't get a wink of sleep. I, said, I, I look up now. My mom has got my dad's coffee. She's shaking like a leaf. <laughs> this is absolutely true. This is all my dad said. My dad said, uh, what are you going to do today, honey? Are you going to do a little shopping? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Jane will be right back with his guests, B. Arthur, Corbin Burnson, and Janine and Brian Bonson. Stops and everything. <laughs> it can cost even more. Anybody home? <laughs> Come in and sit down. I just, I just dropped by to see if you're okay. I'm doing fine. I'm well, doing it great. It doesn't hurt to double check. And you ride motorcycles. You have to be watched. <laughs> <laughs> nice set you have here. I mean, you know, you do a lot of these family shows. Does this place look pretty typical to you? Well, uh, let's look around. You know, you can always tell what kind of family lives in a house by what's in it. Right. And I find that the best place to begin is the magazine rack. Okay, yeah. let's begin at the magazine rack. <laughs> okay, typical magazines. Here's Working Woman. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Obviously, Mom has a career of her own. Huh? Yes, but she's expected to be home in time to cook dinner. 
She's also expected to look like Linda Evans. <laughs> and perform like the flying Wallendas. I guess, uh, that's what they have. That's what they call having it all, I guess. Yes, having it all, including an ulcer, high blood pressure, and eventually open heart surgery. And the kids, a copy of 16, which means they have a girl about nine. I think she has a younger brother. Well, let's see about that. These look like their dad's magazines. They're Soldier of Fortune and Dental Economics. And this means dad is either mercenary, who likes to pretend he's a dentist, or a dentist who really knows how to fight tooth decay. Why don't we, uh, let's go look at the dent. Ah, apparently a well-read family, War and Peace, on cassette. Hey, what's this over here? Ah, oh, looks like somebody's been cutting out coupons. Mm -hmm. What would this be fun to read? Coupons, rebates, special offers. Have someone's been meaning to mail these in for quite a while. Yeah, I don't think these are too recent. What is this here's? What is that one? Ten cents off Ipana toothpaste. Yeah. <laughs> Buy one can of Metrical, get one free. Twenty-five cents off your next purchase of Bosco. Gosh. I guess if you want to mail this stuff in, you're going to need an eight-cent stamp to do it. Come on, let's take a look in the kitchen. Oh, Dad must be some kind of handyman, huh? <laughs> Probably so it'll stay open for easy access. Yeah. Oh, I love these. Love them. The world's greatest cook. I never met a calorie I didn't like. <laughs> I went through four years of college for this. <laughs> Nobody settles for God bless our home anymore, do they? Oh, let's see what the typical American family likes to eat. Oh, watch that door there. Oh, gosh, these look delicious, huh? There's one for you. Yeah. This one has... B-H-A and B-H-T. Ooh, all important members of that delicious B-H family, huh? Mono and diglyceride. Aren't they the heirs to the English muffin empire? <laughs> Maybe. Ooh, here's one. Polysorbate 60 and something called palm oil. Palm oil. Ooh, that means the guy who put it in the, in the package didn't even wash his hands. The thing about eating food is this many preserves it, and when you die, your body will live on long after you're gone. That's a very nice drawing, honey. Now, come on. They're finally boarding. Holiday time is traveling time, with parents bringing their children to see Grandma and Grandpa. But this presents a problem. You know, Robert Benchley once said, there are two kinds of travel. First class, and with children. <laughs> Uh, uh, here we are, Robbie. I don't want to sit here. We have to sit here. These are our seats. I want to sit over there. We can't sit there. Someone else is sitting there. But I want to. I want to. What a gifted child. <laughs> sit down. Just sit down. I think this is the real reason they search for weapons when you get on a plane. They'll serve the food after we're in the air. Well, I want it now. Oh, you really can't get mad at the kid. After all, what do kids want out of life? They want to run around and create more noise than the average jackhammer. And... <laughs> What do travelers want? They just want a quiet place to sleep or get some work done. So what's the theory of modern air travel? Basically this. You take two groups of people, the two most incompatible groups there could be, and you hermetically seal them in a metal tube at 30,000 feet and make them travel around for five and a half or six hours. Oh! 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 oh. No, I I'm sorry, sir. He'll settle down once we take off. He'll settle down one sweet thing. Words you can trust. Words that rank right up there with 
there'll be no tax increase or you can check your luggage right on through to your final destination and oh, it'll be there waiting for you. All right, sweetheart, why don't we do some reading? Here, um, here's your book and here's Mommy's book, just like we're in the library, okay, dear? Psychologists might say the child is hyperactive. Merely a kinetic reaction to being in an enclosed environment. Being a layman, I would suggest just wrapping his knuckles with a ruler. Oh. Robbie, that's not nice. I'm so sorry, sir. Here, here. Uh, Robbie, just play with this. <laughs> Perhaps in the future, you may be able to bring your luggage aboard and just check the kids through. My eyes! Be careful. My eyes! Pick up with the baggage claim. Many children look alike. My eyes! I think there's an eye over there, sir. As you all know, families keep changing over the years. There's always progress, and we constantly have to keep up with the times. A few examples of then and now. Let's start out with toys then. Hi, I'm your teddy bear. Give me a hug, and I'll give you lots of love. Aww. Let's take a look at toys now. Hey, I'm Teddy Bear. Insert my power pack. Insert my power pack. Hey, I'm Teddy Bear. Rewind my tape cassette. Rewind my tape cassette. Hi, I'm Chubby Bear. Insert my memory chip. Into my tummy. Cushion. Inserting it into my head will cause a power overload. Overload. Oh, my Lord! <laughs> he obviously didn't read the instructions. This teddy bear is armed and dangerous. <laughs> now let's take a look at family trees. Family trees, then. Grandpa Walter married Grandma Ida, Ida, and they had a baby, Sarah. That's me, your mommy. And I married Frank, your daddy, and we had you. How about family trees today? After Grandpa Arnold divorced Grandma Patty, <laughs> he, he married Naomi, who already had your step-uncle Stuart from her first marriage, your step-aunt Sherry from her second marriage, and the uh, twins, Ira and Myra, who she had, uh, uh, all by herself. <laughs> married Anne Marie, who gave birth to, um, Eric, your, um, your, uh, half-brother, and then he and Lisa hired Susie, your surrogate mother, to have you. One of the hardest things parents have to deal with is sex education. Let's take a look at sex education then. Well, um, first, um, you have, uh, 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 this. Uh -huh. and, and, and then, uh, you see, here's the book, read it. Fortunately, we live in a more enlightened era. Let's take a look at sex education now. Here's the cable guide. Oh, the nine o'clock movie should explain everything. Another family tradition is helping with homework. Let's take a look at helping with homework then. Dad, what's six times nine? Uh, 54. Dad, what's a hypotenuse? Hmm, that's the longest side of a right triangle. Thanks, Dad. Maybe someday I'll be as smart as you. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Boy, those are the days. Maybe one day you'll be as smart as Dad. How about helping with homework now? Dad, 
Dad, I'm trying to input a sequential format file, but when I boot my floppy disk, all I get is a readout of machine language. <laughs> what should I do? Oh, well, uh, son, uh, I could tell you the answer to that quickly, uh, but you never learn anything that way. <laughs> No, it's better if you just uh, read the manual and uh, figure it out for yourself, okay? Let's take a look at commercials now. Duke, we're talking with Brian Bonsell. That's right, Brian, right? Yeah. Is that, is that your full name? What's your full name? Brian Eric Bonsell. Brian Eric Bonsell, okay. What do you like to be called? Eric. Eric? You want me to call you Eric? Oh, yeah. I'll call you. Do you come from a big family? Yeah. How many brothers and sisters? One sister. One sister. How old? Ten. Ten? Oh, that's a lot older. You get along good with her? Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes. Like, what does she yeah. do that, like, really annoys you? Well, sometimes we, we don't fight that much. You don't fight that much. No. But you do fight. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we spoke to some other boys and girls. We went to a school uh, right here in Burbank. Uh, we were going to research and find a school that was atypical, but then we decided, let's go to one that was only 35 feet from the studio. So that's what we did. We went right across the street here, and we spoke to some kids to see how they get along with their brothers and sisters. And you want to see what they had to say? Yeah. Okay. We're talking about brothers and sisters. Do you think brothers and sisters are, are a pain? You said yes. Raise your hand. Oh, oh they all do. Oh, gosh. And, and you too. They're all a pain. You get along good with your brothers and sisters? No. You don't? What don't you like about your brothers? Who bothers you more, your brothers or your sisters? My brothers. Mm, they older or younger? They're young, older. Oh, they're older. Now, what do they do that bugs you? When I'm watching TV, my brother gets in front of the TV, and I say move, and he just moves. Wait a minute, you say like move this. in front of the TV? Yeah. Um, one big brother and one little sister. Oh, okay. You get along good with them? No. <laughs> with neither of them? Yeah. You fight all the time? Yes. Now, what do you fight about? Well, with my sister, she bites me, she pinches me. Wait, 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 your sister bites you? Just for no reason. You'll be walking down the street, your sister will lunge from the bush, grab you by the neck, and, and just bite you. Yeah. And, that's, and, that's you. and that's exactly the way it happens. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and she pinches you, too. How about your brother? He hits. So you must be quite a guy to do this every single day this happens? Mm, not exactly. How often? How many times a week? Like six a week. Six times a week, so Sunday they take off. Yeah. How about you? Do you get along with your brothers and sisters? My big sister and brother, yes. Yeah. But my little brother, no. No, you don't? My, 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 I'm the youngest, but my other brother, he's 10. I don't get along with him. We fight all over the dog and everything. No, no, what do you fight about? The dog. You fight about the dog? No, no, what do you fight about the dog? Damien always tells me to feed the dog, and it's his job. And sometimes we fight over the dishes. He tells me to wash them for him, and it's his job. No, it's his job to wash the dishes. And he tells me that I wash the dishes, and, and he washes my table. Oh, I see. Now, do you, do you get along good with him other than that, or do you fight all the time? Sometimes we be friends. Okay. Is he a pretty good guy, though? Yes. Oh, he's not too bad. Okay. How about you? Do you get along good with your brothers and sisters? Do you fight? Yep. Now, what do you fight about? Well, who gets the last piece of cake? Who gets the last piece of cake? Why don't you take the last piece of cake and cut it in half and you each share it? Well, it's never even. If somebody gets a bigger crumb, they... No, I want more! If somebody gets a bigger crumb... If somebody gets a crumb, yeah, one more crumb. No, I want more! But do you ever do that? Yes. Oh, you do? How about you? And what did you say you had, an older brother or sister? Younger. Oh, younger, younger brother. Did you get along good with him? No way. No way. Now, how old is he? <laughs> Never? <laughs> so what do you do with him? What does he do? Does he annoy you? Yes. I go like, how? how? He's only four. How can he annoy you? <laughs> like, he does something like break something in the house. And, and I'm trying to help him clean it up. My mom comes in. The glass is in my hand. I get in trouble. <laughs> now, does your brother say, Mom, I did it. It wasn't Asia. No, he does. He does. Mom, look at Asia did. <laughs> so he blames you? Yes. And you get yelled at? Yes. Does your mom believe you? No. Have you contacted an attorney for any of this? Yes, I have. You have? 
Okay. <laughs> Honey, you gonna take your brother to court? Yes. Yeah, that's what you should do. Maybe Judge Wapner should take care of this. No, my uncle's a judge. <laughs> your, your, uncle, your uncle's a judge? Now, have you told your uncle about this? Do you think maybe you should call your uncle? Yes. Plead your case? Yes. Get some facts, <laughs> go to court, and get a judgment against your brother? Yeah. I but, want him in bars. <laughs> you want him in like bars? You think he should be in prison? Yes. He should be in prison. Yes. How about a life you? sentence? A life sentence. Is Dad the spineless, gutless wimp you see on so many sitcoms? Not for much longer. Let's take a look into the not too distant future. What is going on in here? J.J., you had better clean this mess up before your father gets home. Sorry, Mrs. Allen. Mm-hmm. What's the big deal? My dad doesn't care if I play around. My dad's kind of strict. In fact, you might say he's really strict. Whoa! What's going on? Oh, no! That's it now! He's home from work! Attention, family members. Robopop is home. <laughs> wow. Uh, Robopop, this is Matt. You have five seconds to identify yourself as friend or foe. Uh, friend. Well, good. Nice to meet you, non-aggressive neighborhood youth. <laughs> JJ, isn't it time to start your homework? Oh, Mom, can I watch some TV first? You have five seconds to begin your homework or face total destruction. <laughs> Sorry about the boys' mess, Robo Babe. Give me a few minutes to clean up. Leave it to me. I love this guy. Go to the supermarket. Are you sick and tired of? Seeing those, all those tabloids with the same old gossip, the same headlines about the sex lives and problems of famous people. Famous people you don't even know. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to have a gossip tabloid about folks just like you? All the gossip you want, but it's about people you love and care for. But where can you get such a magazine? I've got it right here. It's the Family Inquirer. <laughs> Here's a headline. Dad confesses, I never had to walk 10 miles through snow to get to school. Scientific search reveals no connection between food left on plate and starving children. <laughs> Ooh, here's one. Fed right amount of food, family goldfish lives to ripe old age. <laughs> Almost hard to believe, isn't it? Oh, oh, this one, this one is this is this should shock every parent, this headline. No thanks, Mom, I'm full. Kid wants extra broccoli. Turns out chocolate cake. <laughs> Now, this, this has got to be one of those made-up ones like you read. This could never happen. Weird rights. Family turns off TV, has conversation. <laughs> oh, I like this one. 800 thumbs down. School play boot off stage by angry parents. <laughs> yeah, get my kid out of there. Oh, gosh. This is every mom's worst nightmare, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, that's the headline. Worst nightmare comes true. Child caught an accident in torn underwear. <laughs> oh, and last but not least, this one. Well, if you, if you have kids in college, you know this could never happen. Kid claims, found a part-time job, refuses money sent from home. <laughs> Before there were the Ewings and the Colbys and the Carringtons, there were the Cartwrights, Ben and his sons Adam, Hoss and Little Joe, and their faithful cook, Hop Singh. After many years of success, the Ponderosa was all but wiped out by a forest fire caused by a carelessly tossed burning map. <laughs> and now, three generations later, 
The saga continues. This is the president of the Haas Corporation. I am the head of Adam Unlimited, two subsidiaries of the vast Cartwright Empire. Now, you all know we are the direct descendants of the, the original, original Cartwrights. Cartwrights. <laughs> uh, pardon me, but uh, you're a descendant of Haas Cartwright? Yes. <laughs> now, before we start the meeting. <clears throat> Hoss, little Joe is on the phone. There's no reason to wait for him. He's no businessman. He's just an idealistic little do good to always have some cause. You know, we got to have the whole family for the board meeting. You tell him to get in here as quickly as possible. Late, little Joe. Where were you? I was helping some widows and orphans. They were being driven from their land by some sleazebag, merciless businessmen who want to make way for some huge shopping center. Now, just hold on, little Joe. Those are our sleazebags. <laughs> Gentlemen, I give you, Ponderosa, Galleria! Yay! Yeah. <laughs> restaurants and entertainment complex. It is going to make a fortune. It's a gold mine. Oh, it, it, it's a bonanza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We project record sales for this shopping mall. We are going to be charging more for our merchandise than any other store in the state. <laughs> well, gentlemen, gentlemen, I appeal to all of you this. This project is motivated only by selfishness and pure greed. It, it's inhuman. Yeah. Oh, little Joe, I'm proud of you. Those were inspiring words. <laughs> now, now, there are a few details that need to be ironed out. First, how can we get the smell of fresh chocolate chip cookies in every corner of the mall? <laughs> well, I think we might be able to bring things in. Well, look, I got an idea. Why don't we use only the finest ingredients? We'll bake them fresh every day. What? <laughs> oh, little Joe, little Joe, you missed your call and you should have been a comedian. <laughs> Are there any serious suggestions? Yes, of course. I I propose that we pipe in an atomized solution of hydrox oreoium. It's a cookie molecule. <laughs> this smells like a cookie, and it stimulates that part of the brain which controls shopping. Good idea. You know what? I think we might better get the Hey, 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 why don't we just line people up and tell them to give us their wallet? Little show. You must be a marketing genius. We just paid an advertising agency thousands and thousands of dollars to come up with this campaign. Oh, really? Hey, I don't believe this. What's happened to this family? Mr. Singh is here. Oh, Hop Singh, our faithful cook. It'll be good to see an old friend. Gentlemen. Pack your bags. This is a hostile takeover. <laughs> what are you talking about? I have acquired the Ponderosa, and I'm adding it to my dynasty. Well, this is a hostile takeover. Dynasty's on another network. <laughs> Not that dynasty, the same dynasty. Well, Hop Singh, Hop Singh. You did this to us. We're all friends. Uh, Some friends. My grandfather was stuck in the kitchen cooking all day while you guys were running all over the Ponderosa. Then your grandfather quit the show after three seasons, Mr. Big Shot, Mr. Star. But your grandfather wasn't happy with just Bonanza. He went on to Little House on the Prairie, then Highway to Heaven. My grandfather was the only one who stuck it out. Well, I am the boss now. <laughs> what makes you think that you can handle an empire like this? Because Time Magazine says we're the smartest.
you know, it's hard to believe you all share a parent. I wouldn't have guessed it. Uh... <laughs> now, you, you were not born here. You were born in China. I right? was born in China, right. Is family life a lot different? Or... Well, the biggest difference was before the Second World War, we were always at least three generations in the household. And a couple of cousins and uncles and aunts coming to America during, uh, right before the Second World War, we are down to two generations. Now, in another year, when my, uh, my youngest goes to college, it will be down to one generation. And you think China's the best place to have a I'm not sure I would like to have a family there now. The, it's a good place to visit, not to live anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but they can get Chinese food almost anywhere, though, right? <laughs> That's the thing, yeah, yeah. Corbin, you grew up here in uh, Hollywood. Right here in Hollywood. Oh, right here. Gosh, Hollywood. That's, that's a lot like life in China, isn't it? <laughs> I don't even think you have a tenth of a generation. Well, I was dropped here. right on the star in Hollywood. Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, see, he had three generations. You usually have, oh, half a dozen parents by the time you're nine or ten. <laughs> no, no, no. no, I mean, uh, well, Susan read my family tree. She did read that. Just <laughs> like you. Was, was growing up in Hollywood, did it? I mean, was it a lot different? Did you know the kind of life people in Ohio and Iowa had when you were growing up in, in no, Hollywood? No, they kept taking walls in and walls out and <laughs> curtains up and <laughs> curtains down. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, yeah, yeah. And John, you grew up where? I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I was born in Arkansas, but I was raised in Detroit. Uh, uh, for about 20 years, I lived in Detroit. Now, did your... Now, your dad, what, moved, migrated up to Detroit? Yeah, right after the war, you know, that big general migration of uh, right. a lot of the southerners up to the... But did you have a big extended family in the south that your dad left it at everybody just kind of go? No, actually, my immediate family was pretty small, just myself and my parents. But I've got, you know, scores of cousins and aunts. And, uh, well, you know what I see, which I think is kind of neat, because I've been in, uh, I've seen it in Detroit, I've seen it in Atlanta. And I see a lot of black families have these uh, family reunions with oh, like yeah. hundreds and hundreds of people coming. They have the yeah. T-shirts and great-great-grandmothers and kids and all that right. kind of thing. Right, it's sort of an extension, I guess, from the, uh, the whole Alex Haley thing. Right. It's right. caught on, you know, and uh, I guess it's because for so long, you know, we didn't know how far back our family trees went, you know. Now there's a great interest in it, and people are beginning to make all of these connections, and it's, it's wonderful, you know. So we got a good cross-section. We yeah. got China, Hollywood, and Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> Which one would you be living? You be the judge. Jay will be back with his guests, Barbara Billingsley, Don DeFall, Richard Dysart, Florence Henderson, and Dick Van Patten. <laughs> you know, my dad tried once. My dad really made an effort. I remember I was about 12 or 13. My, my father sent my mother out of the house for this talk. And he called me into the living room. He said, uh, son, come in here, sit down. He says, uh, let me talk to you a minute. I want to talk to you about this sex business that's going on nowadays, you know. <laughs> he says this nonsense with the, uh, with the birds and the bees, uh, you know anything about that? You know anything about that at all? I said, well, yeah, Dad, I, you know, I know a little bit about it. Good, good. How the Yankees look this year? How are we going to win the final? <laughs> and so we asked some seniors their opinions on sex, and we got some surprising answers. Take a look. That's, that sex stuff is, is strictly for the rats and for the birds. Sex stuff is strictly for the birds. I remember that. Now, would you have said that, you think, when you were a young man? Oh, no, no. Sex was a little different then. then, we, then we... <laughs> well, how different, could it, how different could it have been? It was still sex. Well, we always had baseball bats and baseballs and clubs. Uh, that, that took care of the sex part of it a lot. No, no, wait, wait, wait. Well, how does baseball bats and gloves take care of the sex? Well, we were all dead from the neck down and alive from the neck up, so that, that made it all right. So you think that would be safe sex in your day, playing baseball? <laughs> that was just fine. Yeah. This way, you didn't have to marry nobody right away. <laughs> Anybody else in France tell me about this? Be a lady. That was, that was my sex education. That was your sex education. How about our group over here? Your mom did? When I was 13, she said, if you ever get a girl in the family away, don't let her wear a tight corset. Oh, there you go. That's certainly good advice, sir. I, that's perfect advice for a young man. <laughs> did your parents ever say anything to you? No. No, we were not that kind of an open nose. Quite different. Quite different. You just kind of... 
and I picked it up where you could. Learned where you could. I... You know what? I'm not so sure I picked up enough. <laughs> <laughs> There has been a great interest among TV viewers in the popular TV family shows of the past, and I'm happy to have with me tonight a few of the stars of those shows that we all welcomed into our homes for many years. First, please say hello to the star of Eight is Enough. He played Mr. Bradford, Dick Van Penn. The star of Leave it to Beaver, she was Mrs. Cleaver, Barbara Billingsley. Hazel, he played Hazel's boss, George Baxter, Don DeFore. <laughs> and the star of the Brady Bunch, she was Mrs. Brady, Florence Henderson. Sit down, sit down there. I'm glad you all came on. We had a chance to talk a little bit about the old shows. Uh, I guess it was a real thrill doing those shows back then, huh? Mm. It was a living hell, Jay. <laughs> Certainly was. As a matter of fact, we came here to make an announcement. We're filing a class action suit against the three networks. We're suing them for invasion of privacy. I, I don't get it. That's right. You see, we all had family series with real families and real homes. We did not know that there were TV cameras recording everything that we did. Come on, you, you can't be serious here. We're very serious. Jay, I think you underestimate just how real we were. I mean, Father did know best. Everyone did love Lucy. We made room for Daddy. And believe me, we did leave it to Beaver. <laughs> Jay, this is Jay. I don't think we should talk about the lawsuit anymore at this time. It would be inappropriate. From now on, our attorney will speak for us. Oh, you're kidding. What kind of goofball attorney would be flaky enough to handle a case like this? just great. Richard Dysart. Now we have an actor who thinks he's really a lawyer. Well, these aren't scripts, sir. These are litigation documents, which I'll be filing with the Superior Court. Well, what about the millions of Americans who just enjoyed watching the show? <laughs> They'll all be getting subpoenas in the morning. But how can you possibly contact every living American? We used Ed McMahon's mailing list. <laughs> you don't mind, I'd like to recess to confer with my clients. I think it was Gilligan who once said, you can't go home again. <laughs> Great, a subpoena. Family Comedy Hour, sponsored in part by Subaru. We built our reputation by building a better car. on television to come out the front door of a house that has no side. I don't know why, but... You know, as we did this whole show, we, and, and, and we talked about family, we met some families. I mean, you know, the hardest thing, I think, for most families to do is express emotion. I, I mean, I, I know... I was thinking about this the other day. My dad was 76 on his last birthday. Now, my dad and I are real close. We do a lot of things. We have a lot of fun. But I realized I never officially told my dad that I loved him. You know, I mean... I mean, he knows I love him, and I love him, and he loves me, and... But, you know, guys are just not good at this Phil Donahue, Alan Alda stuff, you know? God, they just... You know, it, it's so awkward. I, I see mothers and daughters, ooh, they're real good, but, you know, fathers and sons... 
And I thought this year, when I'm on the road somewhere, no matter where I am, on my dad's birthday, rather than send him the usual five-gallon drum of cologne like I do every year, you know, <laughs> why do we give our dads cologne? What do we expect him to go dating now or something? <laughs> I said, I'm going to call my dad. I'm going to tell him I love him, make it official. You know, this is the most awkward thing, especially on the phone. You know, I dial the phone. My father answers the phone the same way he's been answering the phone for 76 years. Yellow! You know, <laughs> he can't just say hello. Yellow! Yellow there! Hi, Dad. Happy birthday. Who's this? Who's this? I said, it's me, Dad. Oh, hello, son. I said, let's not think about you. know, I've been a pretty good dad and everything. I just want to call, let you know that I, uh, <clears throat> you know, let you know that I, uh, uh kind of like you and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> he says, what? Well, I can't hear you. I said, nothing. Just thinking about you. have been a good dad, you know. Just want to let you know that I, uh, you know, I don't care about you. I kind of... Uh, what, what, are you stuck? You want me to come get you? No, I'm not stuck. I don't want you to come get me. I said, I'm fine. I'm not stuck. I'm fine. I'm fine. I said, I was thinking about you. I've been a good dad. You know, God forbid something should happen or something. I want to let you know that I, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, let you know that I love you. I just want to let you know that I love you. Oh, you love me? Okay, I'm going to put your mother on the line now. <laughs> Tonight, Jonathan Winters makes weird faces at Johnny on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Then on Late Night with David Letterman, David welcomes Christine Lottie and Paul Simon. You know, folks, if you shut your eyes and turn off the sound, you'll hardly even know we're here.